So let's bring in Paul Lapolice now. And if we have to, Lapo will bust in with a breaking news from Montreal. The new head coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks joins us this morning from the nation's capital. I believe that's where you are. Good morning, Lapo. How are you? I'm good. I'm actually in New Hampshire. So oh, I'm trying to uh, relax with the family, and that's why I got my Red Sox gear on and my flannel shirt, trying to be a New Englander. Well, you will never take the New England out of you, Lapo. And I know how busy it is, and it's family time, so I appreciate the time this morning. Let me ask you this. How have the first few weeks been as the head coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks? Yeah, really good. Uh, you know, I, certainly going through the process before, I, I think it's an easy thing when – it's easier when you've done it before. So there, there's a monumental list of things that have to happen for you. But, you know, going through the process before, you just know, try to get something done. And once you get that done today, then you can move to the next thing and just keep doing it. Um, so I think it's gone smoothly. You know, certainly getting some of the staff members we've already brought on board has been huge. And that just makes you feel very comfortable. Staffing to me is one of the most important things, getting player, getting coaches that players respect and the guys, uh, the coach, guys who can make players better. And I think we've done that with our staff. Well, I'm going to get to the Arbuckle trade in a minute, but you mentioned your staff. I'll be honest, I was surprised when I saw Alex Suber named receivers coach, was he not? And is it Charlie McGee, the running backs coach? These are names in Canadian football, but not necessarily at their position or in the CFL. I mean, Suber is a vet, but talk about those hirings if you don't mind. Yeah, so Alex Suber, um, you know, part of my process of evaluating players and bringing coaches in, you know, I, I think it's sometimes a mistake to take a player who's just finished playing and then tell him he's going to go coach a position in the Canadian Football League. You know, I, there's you got to learn how to be a coach. I think at times there's very few guys who can make that transition. Um, and, you know, certainly I, I felt that I always try to track guys in the U.S. And Alex Suber has been coaching for five years. Um, started out at the high school level, then was a graduate assistant at Bethune Cookman, um, then uh, was with Casey Crehan for a couple of months, and then he went to Murray State as a Division One scholarship school as the receiver coach for two years. So I know we're going to get a guy who one can recruit, can really uh, do a great job of understanding he can relate to players. He knows the work ethic because he's been a graduate assistant at the college level, um, and certainly. It's great to have a receiver coach who played halfback. So this is a guy who's really spent time getting better as a receiver coach, and his brother's also an offensive coach. So this is a guy who's got a lot of tools, and certainly uh, I'm excited to bring him along, and certainly his name and being a former player in the league will help him with his players. You know, I, again, I'm dying to ask you about the Arbuckle trade, but at the coaching staff's construction also fascinates me. So Mike Benavides, the guys in the league are saying, where do Lapo and Benny know each other from, TSN? And I said, well, they've gone against each other for years. That's the biggest thing for me is the respect shown by you to hire him. Tells me what you think of him. Yeah, you know, Mike's a good football coach, been a head coach, been a successful defensive coordinator. Um, and certainly been somebody who's got a, a long career in the Canadian Football League. So I think your coordinators have to have a CFL experience. Uh, it's a recipe for disaster if you don't. Uh, so certainly bringing Mike on board gives us that. And he's certainly, you know, he and I have been friends a long time. And certainly the TSN days, we got even closer. Um, it, having him and then Bob Dice is, again, one of my best friends in the business. Um, you know, to be able to retain him, he was one of the, you know, he's one of the most well-respected coaches on this staff in the previous year. So we're excited to have him. You mentioned Charlie Eager. Charlie has been a guest coach of me the last couple of years. Um, came from the college ranks and uh, has been successful 20, year, you know, 20 years in college football. So that's a guy we can bring in who's going to, you know, he's new our system from training camp past two years. He'll be able to uh, teach our players very well and certainly bring in, uh, you know, hard knocks veteran Bob Wiley back into the fold. It's somebody that be our third year together, uh, third time together and knows knows what we want to do system wise, knows how to protect the quarterback and knows how to run the football in the ways that we've done it. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the staff. Those would be some pretty cool um, coaching meetings. Are you done then or you got some more position coaches to go? I got three positions left. So, you know, we're talking to a bunch of guys right now uh, and we still will go down to, I'll go down to the Co CFL coaches convention next week or this weekend, uh, do some interviews down there and then try to finalize the last couple of spots. But, you know, we, we were going to take our time with these last couple of spots. We really, you know, when we got the first couple of spots, we want to make sure we get them as soon as possible. 
Uh, one more from me before I turn Darren loose on you, Lapo, and that is the Arbuckle trade on Friday. How excited were you to get the guy that many feel was the top quarterback entering free agency? Yeah, you know, certainly watching uh, every game he played, uh, I thought he did a lot of things very well. And put, you know, he really put his team in a position to be successful. He stayed on the field. He threw, he threw the ball very well um, and scored touchdowns and, and put his players – put his teammates in position to be successful. When it was a pressure situation, he got the ball out of his hand. When it was a zone blitz situation, he was able to find check downs. Uh, yeah, I was impressed with him and we felt, you know, we need the more opportunities we can get to get guys into the building. We felt it was a reasonable enough trade to, you know, spend time with him and be able to now talk to him and his family and, and tell him about the good things that Ottawa has. Paul, um, I'm sorry. I know you're a New England guy. Um, I, I am sorry about the weekend. I don't know if you're a Patriots guy, too. Uh, I, I assume it's all encompassing. Yeah. So please answer yeah, my question. Been, uh, two great NFL, uh, you know, two days of great NFL football with the, certainly the Saints game and everything. So, yeah, it's pretty outstanding football. This point for the Patriots. Now, as somebody who works in the business, I, I, I actually kind of hate being back here in New England because everyone's like, oh, the Patriots suck. They're terrible. This I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, they've been pretty damn good for a long time. The New England fans are very spoiled. So I try to calm them down when they like when the play when the last week of the playoffs, my friend had season had tickets to the playoff game. So I sold them. The Patriots stink. I'm like, come on, hold on. You guys are so spoiled in here in New England. <laughs> I'm a huge Brady. Tom Brady fan though, too. So you know, I I, I like Tom, but um the, the coaches were a focus in that game. I want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, the whole delay of game thing, Vrabel, Belichick, he was upset. How much does a coach, you know, are you sitting there being like, you know, picking, you know, taking uh, that and liking that part of the game, using the, you know, the rules to your advantage? How did you, how did you kind of watch that go down? Yeah, you're always trying to watch certain scenarios and situations and think about, oh, we should be doing that or that's something we should do. Yeah, especially as a play caller, you're always critiquing oh, they called that at the one-yard line? Why didn't they just do a QB sneak? You know, a lot of my friends, it's hard because my friends will come up to me after last, yesterday I saw a bunch of college friends and they're like, hey, would you have done this? What about McDaniels doing this? And I'm like, "It's guys, it's hard for me to, you know, see a couple clips of the game and be able to decide what their game plan should be. So, uh, but you're always as a coach trying to analyze, hey, if I get put in that situation, what am I doing? I actually have a little notes sheet on my phone that if something comes up when I'm watching a game, I just plug it into my phone to make sure we analyze it and cover it as a staff. You, right. you must be a major Detroit Lions fan, though, right? Because you and Matt Patricia go way, way back. They must, you must have had a spot in your heart for the Lions this year, I would think. Yeah, you know, I just don't spend a lot of time with the NFL. Like, it's usually our season and then basically college football, so I barely know what's going on in the NFL. Um, you know, so certainly I know Matty Paddle, you know, I'm reading a Belichick book right now. talks about his history, and he talks, you know, people forget, like, it took him four years in Cleveland to get that thing turned around. And so I think sometimes it's really hard nowadays where people want you to win year one. And, uh, you know, Belichick's one of the best coaches there ever was and took him three year, three to four years to get Cleveland rolling. And then, you know, then the team moved and, you know, then they moved on from him. So, uh, you know, maddie has got a – you know, he's got to get better players, continue to get his systems in place, and hopefully some things go his way. Well, Paul, you're a busy guy, too. There are a few busier guys than CFL head coaches that I've known. So thanks for your time this morning. All the best in 2020. You know we're watching close, and I appreciate the time, my friend. Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate having me on. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.